In the years ahead, they'll still be talking about the 1987 Mustangs. They'll talk about a team picked no higher than third in the district. But they'll relive the excitement when they recall how this team fought its way to a position as one of the five top teams ever fielded at Sweetwater High. The 1987 Mustangs were impressive in preseason scrimmages against Brownwood and Abilene Cooper, but the season opener silenced quite a few critics. Sweetwater opened its 1987 season with a rather convincing win over Merkel, a 3A powerhouse. Some felt the game might be much closer, but the Mustangs began the season by doing what they would have to do all season long, prove to the doubters that Sweetwater was the competition to beat. The first possession for both Sweetwater and Merkel resulted in punts. John Reddick brought Merkel's punt back up to midfield. Five plays and a penalty later, quarterback Larry Heeler on second and 17 hit Lewis Rose with a pass for a six-yard gain. And on the next play, Heeler scored the first Mustang TD of the season, keeping on the option and dashing 31 yards to the goal. Lewis Rose kicked the extra point to make it Sweetwater 7, Merkel nothing. Rose kicked off to Merkel and the Badgers set up shop at the 37. But the Mustang defense refused to give up yardage. Merkel was forced to punt. But the Mustang fumble was recovered by Merkel on the Sweetwater 11. Just when the Badgers thought they had a chance to tie the game, the red curtain fell on them. On fourth and 13, the defense forced a fumble and the Mustangs recovered. On first down at the 17, tailback Kenneth Norman took the ball and cut around left, then around right, and gained 56 yards. Two plays later, Ernie Munoz took the ball up the middle for 25 yards and the Mustangs' second touchdown of the night. Rose's extra point made it 14-0. Merkel got a good run back on the Mustang kickoff. Kenneth Jowers brought it back up to the Merkel 48. But the Mustang defense gave up nothing on the line of scrimmage. In fact, they took away. The Mustangs moved the ball well in the second quarter, scoring 20 more points. Norman ran one in from one yard. Mustang linebacker Durrell Rather ruined Merkel's next possession with this interception. Billy Wooten took a run for four yards. Norman had a nice game. Peeler hit Lewis Rose with a pass that was juggled but finally caught at the sideline. Then Norman ran to pay dirt from 18 yards out. 27 to nothing. Unable to gain against the Mustangs defense, Merkel punted. Peeler hit Rob Davis on a 25-yard pass play. With just seconds left before the half, Norman took the pitch from Heeler and cut around the right side, 13 yards for the score. Rose made the extra point and the Mustangs went into the locker room with a 34 to nothing lead. In the third, Fumbles ended Sweetwater's first two possessions, but Norman intercepted a Jowers pass and he set up the Mustangs at the Merkel 37.
Dealer pitched back to Norman, who galloped 28 yards downfield. Then Toby Tovias took the healer pitch and ran it nine yards for the score. Rose's kick made it 41 zip. Merkel finally scored in the fourth on Sweetwater's second defense. Merkel would score again on an interception, but Mustang backup quarterback Robbie Pierce connected with John Rawlings for 33 yards and another Mustang touchdown. Final score, 48 to 13, Sweetwater's opening win of 1987. It was a stormy evening in Abilene, and at soggy Shotwell Stadium, the Mustangs met old 5A rival Abilene High. It was not a good night for Sweetwater. Abilene opened the scoring with an 83-yard punt return for a touchdown. On Sweetwater's next offensive play, a fumble that was recovered by the Eagles at the Mustang 19. But the Sweetwater defense held on and the Eagles were forced to try a field goal. The 21-yard kick was good and Abilene had a 10-0 lead. Things could have gotten better for the Mustangs, but they didn't. On the next offensive play, a healer pass was tipped and it fell into the Eagles' arms. Fortunately, the turnover took the Eagles nowhere. In the second quarter, the Mustang offense finally managed to get on track. On the Mustang 15, quarterback Larry Healer kept the ball in the option to the right but was stopped for a one-yard loss. Then Kenneth Norman took the pitch around the left and dashed 86 yards for a touchdown. Lewis Rose's extra point cut the Abilene lead to three points. The Mustang defense clamped down on the Eagles and forced them to punt. John Reddick took it on the 22 and cut his way through for another touchdown. A clipping penalty nullified the go-ahead score. The Mustangs were forced to punt, but Doug Parkhurst kicked with block. The ball bounced into the end zone and rolled out of bounds, giving Abilene a safety. The third quarter looked a little better for the Mustangs. Peeler pitched out to Norman, who then lofted a 22-yard halfback pass to wingback Rob Davis. With the ball at the three, Norman took the healer handoff and leaped through for the touchdown. The try for two extra points failed, leaving the score at Sweetwater 13, Abilene 10. The Eagle offense was stymied on the next possession and was forced to try for a field goal. The ball hit the crossbar and bounced through the uprights. The final score was Abilene 15, Sweetwater 13. It was a loss for Sweetwater, but it set up a successful season. Big Spring, in its first season back in Class 4A, gave Sweetwater its sole district loss in the 1986 season. But this season, the Mustangs were out to illustrate plainly what a steer actually is. That's exactly what they did. Big Spring won the toss, but had a turnover on their first possession. Pressured hard by the tough Mustang defense, the Steers could make little progress. Facing third and three, quarterback Sean Shellman was thrown for a loss, and he fumbled the football. Sweetwater recovered, and soon facing a fourth and eight situation, Healer fired a pass to Rob Davis for a 13-yard gain and the first down. Four plays later, Healer kept the ball on the three and waltzed into the end zone for the score.
The extra point kick was blocked, but Sweetwater led six to nothing. Big Spring's second possession also featured a turnover. The Steers fumbled on the Mustang 15 during the kickoff. Sweetwater recovered. The Mustangs returned the favor three plays later with an interception. But Big Spring fumbled it back immediately and Lucas Bagarin recovered for Sweetwater. Three plays later, Big Spring was called for a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. With the resulting first down, Norman took the pitch at the 15. Then Heeler dashed 13 yards for his second touchdown of the evening. He kept the ball on the two-point try and then scooted across the goal to make the score Sweetwater 14, Big Spring zip. Sweetwater's kick buried Big Spring deep and the defense got busy. John Gloria got a sack on Shellman. And the Big Red defensive line kept shutting the door. The Mustangs took over on downs. But when the second quarter started, the Mustangs had to punt. Later in the quarter, Norman picked off the Shellman pass at the Big Spring 34. Back in action, the offense got busy. Norman gained seven. Munoz got a couple on the ground. On fourth and one, Norman made it to the 18 for the first down. On first down, Heeler kept the ball. He angled upfield for 13 yards before being cut down. Norman leaped over the line for three. And then it was touchdown time again. Rose made it 21 to nothing. After the Sweetwater kickoff, Big Spring set up shop on the 21. Keeping his face out of the grass for the first time all night, Steer quarterback Sean Shellman hit with two big pass plays. They set up Shellman's three yard TD in the closing seconds of the half. The extra point was blocked, and the teams went into the locker room with a score of Sweetwater 21, Big Spring 6. The third quarter started slowly for both teams, but Big Spring got some big plays. They scored first in the second half. They carried it in from the one, but they missed the two-point conversion the score was now 21-12. Later in the third, Shellman fumbled on the Big Spring 1, and the Mustang defender fell on it. Norman flew over the top for the Mustang score. Rose made it 28-12. In the fourth quarter, Sweetwater dashed any hopes for Big Spring. Fullback Ernie Munoz split through the middle on the second play and galloped 47 yards for the Mustangs' fifth touchdown of the evening. Rose again did his magic, and the score was Sweetwater 35, Big Spring 12. 
Just seconds later, Durrell Rather and Doug Parkers cracked down hard on Steer quarterback Shellman, sacking him in the end zone for a two-point safety. Later in the fourth, Shellman again found himself in trouble. Kevin Frizzell and Matt McMillan bored down on Shellman and forced him to ground the ball out of the end zone. Another two-pointer for Sweetwater. As they did in the first half, Big Spring used the closing seconds to score a touchdown that really meant very little. The final score was Sweetwater 39, Big Spring 18. The Mustangs had beaten the defending district champion and had avenged their only district loss in 1986. And it was Coach Tom Ritchie's 100th career win. The next week, Sweetwater traveled to La Mesa to meet the Golden Tornadoes. The game started off a little touchy for Mustang fans. La Mesa kicked off and recovered a successful onside kick. But it did the Tornadoes no good thanks to the Mustang defense. The Mustangs scored on their second possession. Rob Davis' run back set them up at midfield. The first play showed what the Mustangs could do. Norman to the eight yard line. But the drive sputtered. Lewis Rose kicked the field goal through the uprights from the 17. Three to nothing, Sweetwater. Lamisa's first play on the second possession. Norman intercepts on the 35 and runs it back to the 19. But a series of penalties kept the Mustangs out of the end zone. Taking over on downs, the Tours managed to gain only seven yards before putting the ball away. John Reddick took it on the 40. And he returned it to the 21. Peeler handed off to Munoz, who took it to the four. Norman took it to the one. Peeler then sneaked it across for six. Ten to nothing, Sweetwater. The big red defense stayed in the face of the Tours. They made it impossible for Lamisa to gain much ground. On Sweetwater's next possession, Heeler fired a pass to John Rawlings for a 46-yard gain. Two plays later, Heeler took the ball into the end zone again after a six-yard run. The extra point was wide. Sweetwater 16, Lamisa nothing. Later in the second, Lamisa quarterback Santos Moreno fired a seven-yard pass to Jim Horton, and a tough tackle by John Gloria knocked the ball loose. John Reddick recovered for Sweetwater. Larry Heeler fired a pass to Chris Taylor, but the ball bounced off Taylor and into the arms of a waiting tornado. Heeler brought him down at the Mustang one. The tornado scored on the next play, but failed to make the two-point conversion. The score is 16 to six, Sweetwater. The Mustangs began the third quarter in fine style. Billy Wooten carried to the Lamisa 37. A face mask penalty added five more. On the keeper, Heeler made 12. He picked up 10 more seconds later. Then he optioned to Kenneth Norman, who covered the ground for the score. Frizzell's kick raised the count to 23 to 6. Sweetwater. On the kickoff, Tim Demerson fumbled after the hit by Mustang Greg Little. Sweetwater recovered at the Lamisa 23. On the next play, Heeler swept right on the keeper and took it over the goal line. The extra point was good, and the Mustangs led 30 to 6. Kevin Frizzell kicked off to La Mesa, and on the run back, the ball was knocked loose. It bounced up into the hands of another tornado, who ran it in for the score. It was the final tally for the night for La Mesa. 
Ernie Munoz set up one other Mustang TD by taking the ball on the 49, a long ride down to the one. Norman took it in for the score. The Mustangs' final score came on this 14-yard run by Larry Healy. The 43-12 win gave Sweetwater the momentum it needed to continue the march to the district title. Fort Stockton was another contender for the district title. It was homecoming, and the Panthers came to Mustang Bowl to try for an upset. Neither team could muster much offense in the first quarter. And there was no score going into the second period. Fort Stockton had to punt opening the second period. The officials ruled that the ball had touched a Mustang. Fort Stockton had recovered on the Mustang's 17-yard line. Shut down again by the Mustang defense. The Panthers tried a field goal. The Mustang penalty gave them new life. And on fourth and one, Fort Stockton scored. The extra point failed, 6-0, Fort Stockton. Later in the second quarter, Kenneth Norman picked off a Panther pass at the Mustang 18. He ran it back 54 yards to the Fort Stockton 28. On first down, Norman picked up 13 more. And two plays later, Peeler hit Rob Davis on the slant for 15 yards and the touchdown. Kevin Frizzell kicked the extra point. Sweetwater led Fort Stockton seven to nothing at the half. The third quarter offered very little. The sparring continued. In the fourth quarter, Sweetwater finally took control of the game. Kenneth Norman picked off another Fort Stockton pass and brought it back to the Panther 25. And on first down, Norman took the pitch from Larry Heeler, went up the middle, broke left, and then hit pay dirt. Frizzell made it 14 to 6, Sweetwater. The Mustangs smelled another win, and they clamped down on the Panthers. The defense kept control for Sweetwater. But the Mustang drive stalled. The snap sailed over Norman's head, and it looked like disaster, but he got the punt away. Fort Stockton on their own 43, the defense takes over and forces another big play. The Panther punt was blocked. Tommy Miller fell on it on the Mustang 12. On the first play, Norman took it into the end zone to put the game away. The final score, Sweetwater 20, Fort Stockton 6. The Mustangs still undefeated in district play. Pecos is a long road trip for the Mustangs, and the game may not have been up to usual standards, but the Mustangs made the most of it. Sweetwater kicked off to open the game. The Eagles took it on their own 14. But the ball popped loose on the tackle, and it fell into the hands of Robbie Pierce, who ran it into the end zone. Kevin Frizzell made it seven to nothing with just eight seconds off the clock. That was all the scoring in the first quarter, although both teams had threatened. But as the second quarter opened, Lucas Begarin got Pecos quarterback Bobby Smith in his grip and forced a 10 yard loss. Taking over on downs and starting at the 27, the Mustangs began driving. Norman picked up 10. Ernie Munoz took it up the middle and then to the outside for 43 yards.
Norman took it down to the tube. And then he took it in for six points. With the extra point, the Mustangs were now on top by 14. Pecos put on some good moves in the second quarter and made it to the Mustang 24, but they were shut down by the Mustang defense. The Mustangs moved well too, but the score remained 14 to nothing at the half. The Mustangs sputtered in the third quarter, but so did Pecos. But the Mustangs got a big break from a Pecos punt that netted only 20 yards. The Mustang offense went back to work. Healer kept it on the option for the three yard run and the score. Kevin Frizzell made it 21 to nothing. Pecos then began their only scoring drive of the night. The Eagles pecked away at the yardage. Finally on fourth down, a three yard pass found a Pecos receiver in the end zone for the score. But Sweetwater had another game in the win column. Monahans came into Mustang Bowl for this important game with state rank, but it was gained by running up the score on some weaker teams. Sweetwater had a four-game winning streak over the Lobos. They aimed to make it five. A blocked field goal kept Sweetwater from counting on points in the first quarter, and the quarter ended with no score. In the second, Monahans was on the Sweetwater 34. A fumble on the reverse was recovered by Doug Parkhurst. But on the next play, Peeler had the ball stripped on the keeper, and Monahans got it back. Four plays later, Lobo quarterback Carlton Jordan hit Ronnie Molina with a 25-yard pass in the end zone for the first score of the night. The extra point made it 7-0. The Mustangs took the kickoff. John Reddick read it back up to the 35. Healer hit John Rawlings with a 30-yard pass. But another turnover ended the drive. Two plays later, however, Lucas Begarin fell on another Monahan's fumble on the Lobo 24. The Mustang offense went back to work. Norman cut left for 10 yards. Healer took it to the five. Then on fourth and one, Healer got six points with a three yard diving touchdown. The extra point failed and Monahans led by only one. Monahans drove downfield again, but Bugarin got to Jordan again in a big way. And as the quarter ended, John Reddick intercepted a Lobo pass to end the threat. On Monaghan's first possession of the second half, Lobo Charles Thompson got loose on a big gainer. But Kenneth Norman ran him down at the 24. The run set up a field goal attempt that went wide. Later in the third, Sweetwater started on the 47. Norman ran for nine yards. But time ran out in the third quarter with Sweetwater on the Lobo 28. The team swapped sides for the final period, and in a call they'll talk about for a while, Lewis Rose knuckled a field goal on fourth and ten, and skinned it through the uprights, 45 yards away. Nine to seven, Sweetwater. With momentum in their grasp, the Mustangs began shutting down Monahans. Gaining only 16 yards, the Lobos punted the ball away. Healer handed off to Norman in the first play from scrimmage for a 12-yard gain. Behind some good blocks, Ernie Munoz kicked in 19 more. Healer connected with split end John Rawlings for a 14-yard pickup on a 4th and 10 situation. And seconds later, Healer optioned the ball off to Norman, who dashed down the right sideline for a 19-yard touchdown. 
Frizzell kicked the extra point to make it Sweetwater 16, Monaghan 7. In a desperate attempt to get back into the game, Monaghan's went to the air. Doug Parkhurst hit Jordan for a big loss. And the Mustang defensive secondary prevented anything significant. Sweetwater took over late in the fourth on the Monaghan's 37-yard line. After several short gains and a first down, Ernie Munoz took the healer handoff through a seam on the left side of the line and scampered for a 22-yard score. Brazil's kick, the Mustangs completed the scoring for the night and walked proudly out of Mustang Bowl with a 23-7 win over Monaghan. The fifth straight for Sweetwater, and now undefeated in district play. State ranked once again as the result of their destruction of Monaghan, Sweetwater turned attention to the Snyder Tigers. Snyder got first possession, but got nowhere and punted it back. Hampered by an illegal motion penalty, Sweetwater was forced to punt as well. But Snyder sent the entire team against Norman and blocked it. Soon the Tigers led seven to nothing. But it was no upset in the making. Starting the drive on their own 23, the Mustangs soon rested on the Snyder six. Norman took the healer pitch and tallied the first Sweetwater score around the right side. Brazil tied the game at seven. Early in the second quarter, Sweetwater started another long scoring drive. On the option from quarterback Larry Healer, Kenneth Norman took off on a 17 yard run. A holding call and a clipping penalty moved the Mustangs back to second and 30 on their own 25. Billy Wooten gained six. Norman picked up 34 on the option. And a penalty added 15 more. First down on the Snyder 20, Norman gets 10 yards. Norman again carries to the one. Then Healer kept it up the middle for the score. The extra point attempt failed, 13-7. The Mustang defense stood Snyder up on their next possession and forced the punt. The Mustangs took over at the 20. It took Sweetwater only six plays to cover the ground to the goal line. Chris Taylor snagged a Larry Healer pass for a 22-yard gain. Norman picked up the score on this 17-yard play. The Mustangs tried for two but failed. And at the half, the score was 19 to seven, Sweetwater. Snyder was still at the mercy of the Mustang defense as the second half got underway. But the Sweetwater offense had no such problem. Larry Healer passed to Chris Taylor who made a beautiful catch for the game. Healer tallied the score on a nine yard run. But once again, the two point conversion failed. After the Mustang kickoff, Snyder tried again to get something going, but some key defensive plays kept them down. Michael House hit him for a loss. Lucas Bugarin did unto others first. And Kevin Frizzell got him a quarterback. Late in the fourth, the Mustangs destroyed the Snyder punting effort and took over on the Tiger 15. Backup quarterback Robbie Pierce hit Chris Taylor in the end zone for the touchdown. Snyder scored once more before time ran out. But the TD and the two-point conversion weren't enough. The 
31-15 win guaranteed the Mustangs a spot in the playoffs. A win the next week over Andrews would give Sweetwater the district title, but Andrews wanted to be the spoiler. A stiff wind in Mustang Bowl hampered both teams, and Andrews' tough defense kept the Mustang offense in check for the first two possessions. But then Andrews got started. Andrews quarterback Robert Morris on first down fired a 36-yard pass to David Emiliano for the first points of the game. With the extra point, Andrews led 7-0. Later in the quarter, John Reddick took the Andrews punt on the Mustang 23. He weaved his way through some momentary traffic, and then he shot down the sideline 77 yards for the touchdown. Kevin Frizzell tied the game. Andrews' first possession of the second period ended with a punt. Sweetwater took it over on the Andrews 36. Kenneth Norman gained a couple. Healer picked up three more. Norman picked up ten yards and the first down. But little more could be gained. And on fourth down and 16, Lewis Rose went in to try for a field goal. Three more points and the lead. The second half run through sign was prophetic and maybe Andrews should have read it more closely. On the third offensive play of the second half, Norman took the pitch from Healer, swept around left, and then picked up the 44-yard score. Frizzell made it 17-7. Andrews now faced the Sweetwater defense again. And coupled with the wind, it was just too much. Lucas Begarin got in on the punt, blocked it, and Sweetwater took over on the 17. Some quick plays through the line. Then Healer hit Lewis Rose all alone in the corner for the score. With the extra point, 24-7 Sweetwater. Ernie Munoz picked up another third quarter score for Sweetwater to make it 31-7. Then, with less than two minutes left in the third period, Sweetwater had first down at the Andrews 49. Peeler kept the ball on option to the right, waited for Andrews to commit, and then pitched out to Norman, who ran it in for the score. Brazil's fifth extra point made it 38 to 7. Mustang backups played the rest of the game, and they held Andrews in check. Lupe Gomez got two interceptions in the fourth quarter. The win gave Sweetwater the district championship, with one game left in the regular season. Lakeview fumbled the opening kickoff, so Sweetwater's offense really got the season finale underway. A seven-play drive took the Mustangs to fourth and six at the Lakeview 15. And Lewis Rose got the first points with this field goal. Lakeview's hurry-up offense got them three quick first downs. But sometimes operating without a huddle also can get expensive. Mustangs forced the punt. The Chiefs expected a run as the Mustangs took over on first down, but quarterback Larry Healer lofted it up and hit Chris Taylor with a 45-yard bomb. But the ball was stripped away on the next play. And Lakeview recovered. Lakeview did gain some ground. But the Sweetwater pass defense held. 
taking the punt and setting up on the 29, Sweetwater launched another scoring drive. Keeler capped it off with a quarterback sneak for the first touchdown of the night. And soon the score was 10 to nothing, thanks to Kevin Frizzell. The Chiefs tried again to get their offense working. But the Big Red defense tackled them for losses. Another Lakeview punt. John Reddick took it on the Mustang 38. And he was finally tackled in the brass section of the Chiefs 25. Norman took the ball for six yards. Healer kept it for a gain of 11. Then Healer found tight end Lewis Rose in the end zone for an eight yard TD. The Mustang lead increased to 17 points. As the half wound down, an Eric Dumas bomb was picked off by Rob Davis. It gave the Mustangs another scoring opportunity, and they took it. Healer hit John Rawlings for 25 yards. And he hit Rawlings again for 22 more. It led to a Lewis Rose field goal, 20 to nothing, halftime. Early in the third, another Mustang scoring drive. Norman picked up 35 yards. Healer took it to the one. Then Norman got the touchdown. Trailing 27 to nothing and with the Mustang defense staring them in the face, the Chiefs blinked again. Another Lakeview punt. The fourth quarter began in the middle of the resulting Sweetwater drive. Healer hit Rose again on the slant. And Norman counted the points from six yards out. With Frizzell's kick, 34 to nothing, Sweetwater. The normally productive Lakeview offense finally managed to score against the Mustang defense in the closing seconds of the game. But with the 34 to six win, the Mustangs had wrapped up a perfect district season and a fourth straight trip to the state playoffs. For by district, Sweetwater headed to Lubbock's Jones Stadium to meet Borger. Held scoreless in two previous playoff games against the Mustangs, the Bulldogs were determined to break the string. They did on the third play of the game. Quarterback John Moose first appeared to be trapped, but he got loose for an 85-yard touchdown. And Borger led seven to nothing. Trailing by seven, the Mustang offense took the ball for only two yards on the first two carries after the kickoff. But on the third, quarterback Larry Healer and split end John Rawlings pulled off a crowd pleaser. Healer sent a high pass to Rawlings, who leaped up, knocked the ball down, and made the reception for the first on the Borger 37. Ernie Munoz picked up 13 yards on this play. Norman then carried to the four. And then Norman for the first Mustang score of the afternoon. Kevin Frizzell tied it up. Borger again faced a tough Sweetwater defense. None of Moose's three passes could be completed. Sweetwater took it over on the 33 and started a long drive that would net six first downs. Healer hit Chris Taylor on the right sideline. And hit Rose on the left. Finally, Norman found a hole and ran five yards for the touchdown. Another Frizzell kick, and the Mustangs were on top, 14-7. Borger got nowhere on their next possession. 
The Mustangs took over on their own 39. Healer kept the ball, cut through heavy traffic, shook off several tackles, and made it down to the one after a 58-yard run. Norman made up the remaining yard, scoring for the third time. Frizzell kept his string going, and it was 21 to seven. Borger tried again, but the Mustang defense broke up almost everything they tried. Another Borger punt. As the quarter changed, the Mustang offense began chewing up the clock, gaining the ground with short runs. Finally, the ball rested on the Borger 25, and on second and 10, Norman took the healer pitch around the left side, broke a couple of tackles, and smashed into the end zone. Frizzell left the count to 28-7. Borger scored just before halftime, but at intermission, the score was 28-14, Sweetwater. The Mustangs' first possession of the third quarter sputtered. But so did Borgers. John Moose fired a pass into the arms of Mustang linebacker Darrell Rather. He took it up to the 16-yard line. Healer kept the ball and ran it up to the one. Then Norman dived in for the score. 35-14, Sweetwater. The Bulldogs tried desperately to get something started. But the Mustang defense was just too tough. Sweetwater brought the scoring to an end in the fourth. Ernie Munoz carried for a good run. Healer hit John Rawlings on a pass that took the ball to the 31. Then on the option around right side, Norman covered the distance. Frizzell did his job. And time ran out with Sweetwater marking up the third straight playoff win against Borger. With the bi-district trophy in hand, the Mustangs looked ahead to regional. Next stop for the Mustangs, Abilene Shotwell Stadium to meet the Vernon Lions for the regional title. The Mustangs got a 30-yard kickoff return to open up the game. Thanks to John Reddick. It took three plays for the Mustangs to score. Kenneth Norman took the pitch and charged in for the 39-yard touchdown. Frizzell made it 7-zip. Vernon's first possession sputtered after just three plays. But Sweetwater was called for roughing the kicker, giving the Lions a second chance. Finally halted on the nine, Vernon settled for a field goal to narrow the Sweetwater lead to four. Late in the first, near disaster, Norman was hit as he tried to take a healer pitch. Vernon recovered the fumble at the 16. But the Mustang pass defense kept them out of the end zone. Vernon had to settle for another field goal to cut the Mustang lead to one. Taking the Vernon kickoff at the 19, the Mustang Texas star play went into effect. Larry Healer handed off to Kenneth Norman, who ran to the right, and then cut across field for an 81-yard touchdown. Frizzell's kick gave the Mustangs a 14-6 lead. The third quarter saw more problems for Vernon. Problems in the form of Greg Little, Matt McMillan, and Doug Parkhurst. No problem for the Mustangs on their first possession of the third. Larry Healer on the keeper went right on the option, broke through traffic in the middle, and then race to the end zone for the touchdown. On 
the drive for two points. Healer kept the ball and made it over the line. 22-6, Sweetwater. Vernon's only scoring drive began late in the fourth. But John Reddick made it very hard for them. The Lions finally pushed it across with 38 seconds left. 22-14 now with the two-point conversion. All the Lions had to do to win was tie since penetrations were even, but John Rawlings got the onside kick and the game was over. The Mustangs were regional champions. The Canyon Eagles looked tough. Many considered them the team to beat in Class 4A, but that was just the way the 1987 Mustangs liked it. The first quarter was a sparring match, both sides feeling the other out, measuring strengths and weaknesses. But in the second, the Mustangs went on the scoreboard. Second and seven at the Canyon 44. Norman took the healer pitch around the left side for the touchdown. But a flag was dropped on Lewis Rose and the ball came back. Three plays later, Norman took it around the right side. Rose demolished his man on a ferocious block and Norman dashed into the end zone. Frizzell raised the count to 7-0. Canyon came back. After a five-play, 75-yard drive, the Eagles came down to a score from 20 yards out. The extra point tied the game. In spite of this John Rawlings reception, Sweetwater's next drive fizzled. Canyon took over again, and with a minute 15 on the clock, the Eagles scored with a 16-yard pass play. The conversion made it 14-7 Kent. The Mustangs refused to settle for that. Munoz carried for a big game. Norman moved the ball some more. Healer scrambled for another game. Rawlings snagged a long healer pass to set up the score. Then healer zipped one to Lewis Rose across the middle for a big touchdown. Frizzell tied it up at the half. Sweetwater began the second half with a scoring drive that would eat up seven minutes on the clock. It was a steady, yard-eating drive. Norman capped it off. He managed on second effort to fall across the goal line for the go-ahead score. Soon it was 21-14 Sweetwater. Canyon tried to even it up on the next possession, but Rob Davis blew them away and dazzled the fans in the stands with an interception at the 25. He was all alone and ran it into the end zone to put the game on ice. For all intents and purposes, the game was over, but the Mustangs piled on a little more with a 76-yard Norman touchdown run midway through the fourth quarter. Frizzell's kick, the Mustangs led 35-14. John Reddick then threw water on any further Canyon hopes with an interception just minutes later. Time ran out on Canyon. And the Mustangs were the quarterfinal champions. Sweetwater and Rockwall met in TCU's Amon Carter Stadium wasn't much of a game thanks to the officials. It was more like armed robbery. Kenneth Norman got their attention by running the opening kickoff back 87 yards for a touchdown. But the six to nothing lead would not last.
Rockwall got a 37-yard return on the resulting kickoff. But the Mustangs got the ball back six plays later on a Michael House interception. A controversial play in Sweetwater's next series. Norman, off on a long run, is thrown around by the face mask out of bounds and is hit late. No flags fall. It's hard for 11 men to move against 15, but the Mustangs did. Moving to the five, a field goal was called. But Rose's kick went wide. Still 6-0, Sweetwater. In the second quarter, Rockwall got loose on an 80-yard drive. Kevin Frizzell slowed their progress a little. But the drive was capped off by this 19-yard touchdown pass. With the one-point kick, Rockwall led 7-6. Rockwall chose not to kick deep to Sweetwater's return men, but Durrell rather took it, broke through the middle, and picked up a good game. An unnecessary roughness penalty against Rockwall added 15 more and moved the ball to the 36. Munoz blasted through the middle for a 25-yard pickup. Peeler took it to the 4. And soon it was first and goal on the 1. Rockwall may have initiated it, but Sweetwater got the 15-yard penalty flag amid all the shoving. When coach Tom Ritchie protested, another 15-yard penalty was imposed. It was too much to overcome. The half ended with Sweetwater trailing. There was more controversy in the third quarter. Rockwall launched a long drive. Nearing the Mustang goal line, Rockwall fumbled. Sweetwater fell on it. The official nearest started to signal the turnover, but the line judge, in no position to see, overruled. Rockwall scored two plays later. 13-6, Rockwall. In the fourth, Kenneth Norman intercepted a Rockwall pass and ran it back to the Rockwall 43. The whole game came down to fourth and eight on the Rockwall 10. The pass was intercepted. Time ran out. Sweetwater was outpointed, but no one, certainly not Rockwall, could outclass them. They may be the uncrowned 1987 state champs. They certainly are in Sweetwater.